so anatomy of lacrimal apparatus mainly the applied portion so this is the eyeball so the lacrimal apparatus consists of two things first of all number one the lacrimal gland and then the lacrimal passage lacrimal gland so in the lacrimal apparatus main lacrimal gland and some accessory lacrimal gland so first of all the main lacrimal gland so the main lacrimal gland is situated in the first of all lacrimal gland in the orbital margin the inferior part of the orbital margin in the lacrimal fossa for the gland and the lacrimal gland has two part so if this is the bony frontal If this is the bony frontal then the lacrimal gland has a orbital part and one something palpable part so the lacrimal lacrimal gland has a two part orbital part and the palpable part and this lacrimal gland from the lacrimal gland some ducts open into the lateral portion of the superior fornix these are 10 to 20 in number known as lacrimal duct and some portion to the inferior fornix so these are lacrimal duct there are 2 to 4 in number and some accessory lacrimal gland also present so if we think the anatomy of the palpable conjunctivita this is the palpable conjunctivita fornix and the bulbar conjunctivita and this is the tarsal plate some lacrimal accessory lacrimal gland that is the gland of hole fairing situated in this situation in between the superior border of the tarsal plate and the superior fornix some gland present accessory lacrimal gland in the eyelid so gland of hole fairing and some gland are present in the superior portion of the tarsal plate to and also some extent of in between them in from the or along with the ulferin gland that is known as gland of cross so we finish the part of the lacrimal gland then the lacrimal passage so the lacrimal ducts are coming from the upper and the lateral portion open into the lacrimal puncta so this is the two lacrimal puncta upper lacrimal puncta and the lower lacrimal puncta so in the lacrimal passage first are lacrimal puncta so left so upper lacrimal puncta situated from the inner canthus to the temporal side is never about 6 millimeter and the lower is 6.5 millimeter from the lacrimal puncta 
there is canal two canaliculi a superior canaliculi and the inferior canaliculi they are open to form common canaliculi and then open into the lacrimal sac and the lacrimal sac continuous known as lacrimal nasolacrimal ducts and open into the inferior meatus of the nose so the lacrimal passage first of all the lacrimal ducts are open into the lacrimal canaliculi these are the soup this is the upper puncta and this is the lower puncta so the superior can this is the superior canaliculus and the inferior canaliculus so canaliculus has two parts one vertical parts and horizontal part horizontal parts so six to eight millimeter in length and vertical part one millimeter in length so superior canaliculus and the inferior canaliculus open a joint to form common canaliculus these are also one millimeter in length and open into the lacrimal sac so the lacrimal sac is situated in between the frontal process of the maxilla and the lacrimal bone there is a lacrimal fossa for the lacrimal sac so the lacrimal sac in extended position it is 15 to 16 millimeter in length so the lacrimal sac has three part that is the upper portion that is known as fundus and then this is the body of the lacrimal sac and then the narrow constricted part is known as neck and it continues to the inferior meters as a nasolacrimal ducts inferior that is the downward backward and laterally to the inferior meters so if you if we think this is the nose then this is the middle meters that is the inferior meters and it's open into the inferior meters and there is a valve known as Hasner valve thickening of mucosa mainly and the lacrimal nasolacrimal duct is mainly 15 to 18 millimeter in length so this is the applied anatomy so we finished about the anatomy of the lacrimal apparatus